So welcome to our main band concert. Uh, back in March, uh, I kind of explained some of the COVID things that we had to work through. Um, and while we had some, uh, got lucky and we got to have some more normal rehearsals, got to play as one band, found a way to uh, fit in one room. Um, we had some new factors and that would be construction. So you think about it in April, that's when the office moved to the other side of the building because they needed to work on our side. So that meant there were a lot more sounds happening that weren't necessarily from us making music happening on the music um, end of the building. And as you know it, right when I decided that we should start recording for the band concert, the jackhammer started. So it is what it is. Um, if at any time in some of the recordings you hear some maybe uh, extra sounds like percussion or something, that's simply the construction that we've been living with. And we're all super happy and excited for the addition, but just know that that is what was happening when we were trying to record. Um, up first, we're gonna have the fifth grade band play. Now in March, if you remember, uh, we talked about how we were basically still playing out of our lesson books. We were learning how to play kind of one line at a time, a couple duets, working on some rounds, but basically just kind of single lines of music. Well now, we moved on to sheet music, which means instead of one line, we have a whole sheet, okay? And I asked the kids, you know, what did you think when I first gave you this music? And they said things like, oh, I had no idea what was going on. Um, I thought it was gonna be impossible. I was afraid I was gonna play at the wrong time. And so what we did is we just kind of took it in chunks. We explained a couple things that were gonna happen. We talked about how music is just patterns. So what happens at maybe measure five, you're gonna see again later at 13 and you just kind of have to figure out, oh, I've done this before. I've learned that already. Um, so I thought it would be important for them to experience full band music before they moved on to junior high because that's basically exclusively what we do. Um, they did a great job with it um, and I think they were even surprised how well they were able to um, put it together. And so here is Uptown Strut by Robert Sheldon. in junior high band is called Above and Beyond uh, by James Swearingen. Um, so with this piece, we talked a lot about balance. You know, who has the important part, who needs to back off. Um, we talked about styles, 
Um, it starts off as kind of like a fanfare and they marked it as marcado. Well, what does that mean? What do we need to do? And then later we have legato, which means smooth. So what do you need to do to change that style? Um, we talked about crescendos. How do we make those effective? Um, how do we make dynamics? It's kind of like, you know, when you're on stage, you have to overdo everything. Um, like for a play, you have to overdo things in order for the audience to get that. So that's basically the stuff that we worked on for Above and Beyond. So hopefully you enjoy that. junior high is going to do is called Aztalon by Michael Sweeney. Um, this is a piece new to me. It's been around a while, um, but I've never had a band do it before, but it's really, really neat. Um, so Aztalon uh, is standing for an ancient village. So when I first found it, I thought, oh, this is from a really far away place. And then I read the description that the composer write, and it's actually after Aztalon State Park near Lake Mills, Wisconsin. There was an ancient village there, um, and they have found only one burial site, and apparently it was a female who ruled um, kind of that area. They believe that these ancient people eventually kind of uh, roamed south and became part of the Aztec. Um, but it's written about these um, this ancient village that they believe is there in Wisconsin of all places. Um, so it's gonna start out with kind of some earth sounds and you're gonna hear like thunder and some weather happening um, and then we have um, the rest of the band gets to come in and then it kind of finishes with uh, the wind again um, really really cool piece I'll apologize for the video in advance um, so I tried to do a little bit a different angle so that you could see kids better um, and so I set up the tripod in the bleachers and it turns out that our percussion is really effective at making you feel the music because it would shake the camera. So there's occasionally where it's gonna be a little bit of a visual effect, um, so you might just need to listen if it makes you queasy, where it moves the camera a little bit. But um, a really cool piece here is Astalon.
Uh, the next piece we're going to play is called Stand Up and Swing by John O'Reilly. And now this is a jazz tune, and so it's written in a swing style, which is really fun to teach because instead of just reading the straight eighth notes, we had to talk about how do you swing them and make it sound jazzy. Um, I like this one because it features every section of the band. Um, so everyone gets a soli section, um, percussion get to learn how to play in a swing style, um, and then we kind of play in like a round at the end so they have to know their part and well enough to play it in a round. Um, plus it adds movement. So it's literally stand up and swing. <laughs> Despicable Me 2 that it's featured in. Um, but this is a pop piece, and some people scoff at that. But honestly, I think it's a good teaching tool because they know what it should sound like, but now they're reading difficult rhythms and key signatures we don't always play in, and they know what it should sound like, so they're able to put down what's on paper and what's in their head and make them match. Um, so that's why I think pop music is occasionally okay um, in band music because the kids are able to connect with it, um, but you can still teach through it. Um, so awesome rhythms, awesome bass line, um, fun percussion parts, here is bad. Thank you.
So the next piece of music is probably the cutest piece that I have ever asked someone to play. Literally every time I would practice with Zach and Paige and we were done playing, I would stand up and go, oh, that's just so cute. And they just like roll their eyes at me. But it features a piccolo and a tuba, and it's called The Elephant and the Flea by Ralph Siegel. Um, so you have the piccolo and the tuba are featured, and then the band is kind of background. Um, I also did have them perform this as a solo and ensemble piece because there is an arrangement that a piano can play the part, the background part for them, the accompaniment. Um, so they took this also to solo and ensemble, which is featured on that video. Um, but this is the band arrangement. And so it's super cute, it's super fun, but it is very challenging. And luckily I have two um, very talented seniors who could pull this off. Um, so here is Elephant and Flea featuring Zach Jackson and Paige Heimerl. <laughs> on a hymn song of Philip Liss. Um, it's a very beautiful piece of music, but it has a very emotional background, which I think is important for you to know as you listen. Um, so uh, hymn song of Philip Liss. Philip Liss wrote the um, hymn tune, um, It Is Well With My Soul, or When Peace Like a River, a lot of people know that hymn. But I bet a lot of people don't know how those words were written. And here's where a man named Horatio Spafford um, comes into play. He was a businessman in Chicago, and um, if you know anything about the Chicago fire, it basically devastated the entire city. And for him being a businessman, everything was devastated. Um, so he had that blow to his um, kind of life. He also lost uh, his only son to scarlet fever around the same time. And so he had three daughters left. 
and he was gonna go on a trip to Europe with his three daughters and his wife. But some business came up dealing with the aftermath of the Chicago fire, so he stayed behind. Well, on this trip, so his wife and his three daughters are traveling across the um, ocean and they hit another ship. And so all three daughters are lost. And so his wife sends a telegram, the infamous um, telegram that she sent, just says, saved alone. So here, he not only lost his only son, he lost all of his children. And so he had to cross the ocean to get to his grieving wife. So as he passed over the spot, he came up with the words, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast me taught to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Because he needed to find a way um, to deal with his grief. And so he wrote this poem. And so that's what this um, band arrangement is based off of. Um, a, a very emotional piece. It's very beautiful. Um, technically, it's not hard when the kids look at the piece of music, but like I told them, to pull it off is what's tricky. To make it meaningful is what you have to work on. So hopefully enjoy. Here is hymn song of Philip Bliss.
we play our, our last piece, I just want to say um, a few things about our seniors. I did create um, a separate tribute just to them, and that has um, everything from baby pictures to senior pictures, pictures from the um, Chicago trip that we got to do when they were freshmen, um, some awesome trick-or-treat costumes from the uh, concerts we do there. Um, you'll see these kids were involved in everything. I mean, they were doing honor bands when they were tiny little fifth and sixth graders to the Santa days, um, playing for church. I mean, man, they were all over the place doing everything. Um, and that kind of you know brings me to the next point. I mean, these kids, I think it's a big deal to have 11 that stay in band because my first year here, I had zero seniors and I had one junior. So to have 11 stay, to me, is a big deal. But not just that they stayed, but that they contributed so much. Um, they were definitely the leaders in the group um, and so musically talented. Um, you're going to hear, I mean, you saw two of them featured on a piece already. Another one has a solo, a really tiny one that I convinced him to do at the end. Um, I think there's only three of the 11 seniors that have never done a solo and ensemble. And a lot of them do like two or three events all the time. Um, so I really have appreciated everything that they've contributed to the band. And I wish them all the best um, on their next chapter. As for our next piece, traveling music, which hopefully these kids didn't get to do a little more traveling than we have in the past year and a half. Um, so traveling music is a fun um, rhythmic piece to teach because it has what it's called an ostinato. So it's one rhythm that you're going to hear over and over, and everyone has it at some point. The trumpets really get it. Um, but what we did is I would have it up on the smart board, and we would clap through it before every time we had to play it. And then I'd have um, everyone play it on a concert B flat. And then I'd have just the trumpets go, and then the whole band, and then we'd try to run it. Um, so a really fun teaching piece. I think it reminds me of that Baby Bumblebee song, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, but it's based on an Arkansas folk song. So here is Traveling Music.
so that's what we've been working on since March. Um, shout out to Lizzie Anderson, Anya Tubert, Zach Jackson, who helped us um, with some of the recording. Um, thanks to the admins for supporting us. Um, even one of them who tried to ask the construction crew to maybe not use the jackhammer for like 30 minutes so he could record quick. Um, do what you can. Um, so we look forward to making more music in the fall and I wish everyone a safe and healthy summer.